So this is video eight in my Virtuoso series, and we're going to be using the Genus tool to uh, convert Verilog into structural Verilog um, using the cells we created in step seven. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my VLSI website and download this genus.tgz, and it's a very small little file, um, shouldn't take real long. And I'm going to extract that file into a, a directory to work in. And if I go into the genus directory and look at the run.tcl file, um, I see some things that I'm prompted here to edit. Um, so we're going to want to have this match the name of the Verilog file that we're going to create, or the module that we're going to use. This is the name of the external clock pin to our Verilog module, um, although we might have multiples and then we'd have to hand edit the file. The period is the period of the clock, so this would be 50 nanoseconds. Um, the input delay and the output delay in picoseconds. Um, and then the list of Verilog files that we want to include and the library that we generated in, in video 7 um, of the characterized cells. Everything else in here should basically be the same and shouldn't really need any other changes. So if you're using top and top and you have the same files, um, really all I've got to do is um, we'll have to copy the merge CCS lib to the libraries folder and we'll see here that that's where it's going to look for the libraries. So let's take a look at the, um, the Verilog file. So the Verilog file is really quite st straightforward. It's a simple little state machine. Um, there's really nothing to it. So all I've got to do is run the Genesis utility with our script. Okay, so in order to run the Genesis utility, I want to do the Genesis with, sorry, Genesis with the, the user mode is legacy underscore UI, and then I'm going to do a dash F to specify the file name, and I want to give it the run.tickle. Um, this will run for about 10 seconds. Once it's done, um, we can review to see what it did, and we can see, for example, that it calculated the, the timing path. The worst case timing path that it found was 12,000 picoseconds or 12 nanoseconds. My clock is 50 nanoseconds, so we're comfortably inside. Um, so our timing slack, or the difference between the clock and the longest path is 37,000 picoseconds. So we could run this a whole lot faster. Um, we also see the, different, the number of gates that were used. Um, so two flip-flops, two inverters, seven NOR gates, one XOR. And we can even get an uh, estimate of the power that was used. Um, I want to uh, pull up the GUI, so we're going to do a GUI show. And what we're interested in seeing is the uh, schematic view. And so the schematic view shows the representation of the symbols and that we laid out when we did the cell schematic, um, and then the mapping onto the uh, um, actual parts that we're using. So if I were to zoom in, we can see how it's connected my NORs and my XORs together to create the same circuit. So if we're satisfied with all of that, we can exit Genesis and we can take a look at um, the files that it made. And one of the interesting files is file called mapped.v and this is the logic of the Verilog module that we made mapped onto the gates that we've defined in our libraries. We could now, we'll then use this to import back into Virtuoso in order to be able to simulate the circuit. So, so we're back in Virtuoso and I want to import the Verilog that we just created and the Verilog file was located in the Genesis folder. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong directory. And the Genesis folder. 
the uh, file here is map.v. I want it to go into ship cells. Um, and we're using ship cells and uh, VDD and ground are both our uh, global nets. And there's just information for the schematic generation. And so we should be able to go ahead and load that in. Um, yep, we're definitely not going to overwrite anything. Hit OK. And we can take a look at the log file and We may have to refresh, and sure enough, oh, so there's a little window in the back, and so yep, we'll say refresh, and sure enough, here is our schematic view and our symbol view, and um, Theoretically, we could even go ahead and load our Verilog view again. Um, kind of unnecessary. The cool thing is um, we could now essentially go through our normal, we have a schematic, and so we could actually go through our normal testing procedure here, um, drive some input into the, uh, the in and verify the output using ADE, and actually verify that this would do um, the logic that we want and even characterize it electrically.